Good afternoon. 2024, uh, National 5 Chemistry Paper, folks. First of all, please don't watch this. If it's going to cause you any stress or anxiety, go and enjoy the rest of your study leave. Um, second, these are just my guesses, I'm afraid. Not the official SQ answers. You can't use them to estimate a correct number, I'm afraid. But let's push on. I'm going to do this double quick so you can pause it and have a look if you want to compare your answers. Number one, sneaky question because it's more of a maths thing than a chemistry thing. You'd be tempted to put that one, but the slash and the minus one means it's wrong. It's bars per minute in this one. Isotopes, uh, same number of protons, different number of neutrons. That one there. I uh, had to go and look it up. Couldn't remember the atomic number of tin. It's 50 plus 74 it gives you 124. Uh, lead. Uh, I like this one. They've given loads of clues on this to the bonding because lead is a liquid uh, that does not conduct electricity, which means it's molecular. Uh, and the fact that it's a liquid at room temperature means it's got a low boiling point. It's a molecule, not a giant covalent network. Can I fit all this in nearly? Never heard of this. Not at your level anyway. Come back at higher uh, and you'll be familiar with it. Hydrogen bonds. Here's the definition here. You follow this definition. It's a problem solving question. You should get that answer there because the carbon is bonded to an oxygen which is directly bonded to hydrogen. Number six. Um, solubility. These are all metal oxides, so they all look like bases at first, but if you check out the solubility, only one actually dissolves in water and it's calcium oxide. Seven. We've got a ratio of two to one. So if we've got four of this, that means you'll require two of the oxygen. Number eight. I don't know whose paper this is, but this person seem, seems to know their stuff, which is nice because they've come up with the right answer. I love the way the fact they've put diatomics for each of these, so they haven't been filled into putting nitrogen. Um, number nine. I've said super sneaky here. Why have I said that for this question? Because... If you add water to an alkali solution, you've actually still got the same number of moles of the stuff that's dissolved. It's just it's dissolved in a bigger volume. So if the said concentration remains the same, that would be wrong. But the same number of moles is actually still there. And the pH is super sneaky because it will start high, but 14, and it will climb down closer to 7. That's why C is that one. I like that question. It's a lot of work for one mark though. Which of the following is most likely to be a use for alkanes? The answer is fuels. Please don't use petrol as medicine. Don't go drinking your petrol. That is not a good idea. Uh, number 11, we've got the acycloalkynes. Never heard of them. So it's problem solving time. How do we get from eight carbons to 12 hydrogens? You multiply by two, which will give you 16 and then subtract four. So that is our answer. Which of these following compounds is an isomer of pent-2-ene? I looked for the shortcut, find five carbons, find a double bond. It's this one or this one. But that is still pent-2-ene. This is pent-1-ene, so that's your answer. Number 13. Number 13. Uh, the short and structural form of this compound is this. Just track along, that's a CH3 and then a CH2 and then two branches onto here. Boom, that's your answer. Number 14, what bond do these have in common? CC bond. Number 15, problem solving. We've never heard of amines. We've never heard of classification of them. But if you look at this, can I zoom out on this one so we can get the whole page? Oh, there's no point, is there? Because you can't see the whole page on the screen. I'll just zoom back in again. Ignore me, I'm rambling. I'm a muppet. Um, so this must be an amine. This is classified as primary, secondary, tertiary. What has changed? Well, this carbon, the, sorry, this nitrogen here at the center has only got one carbon. This one's got two attached to it, and this one's got three carbons. So that'll be a primary, secondary, and tertiary, which is a fancy name for thirdary. Match up to these ones here. Um, the only one here that's got a nitrogen that's attached to two carbons, which is our secondary definition, is this one. I have complained here to the SQA. Whoever wrote this question, I would say it was an inconsistent representation of the angles, guys. Look, you just sometimes got 120 and you sometimes got 90. Maybe sort it out for next time around. Questions 16 and 17. I don't know why I'm talking to the SQA. Nobody from the SQA is watching this. I'm not exactly in their Christmas card list. Um, what's going on here? We're burning some fuels. Uh, we're releasing some energy. Uh, which experiment was most energy released? You can do the calculations. This person here, again, knows their stuff. They've calculated all four. I'm too lazy for that. I would look at the fact that you get the largest temperature rise for the most amount of water and cut straight to the chase on that one. You must be recently releasing a bucket load of energy because that's a massive amount of water. 
However, if it was me, I would double check it. 17, which of the following would not improve the experimental results? Um, I'm going to go with A. Increasing the distance will lose more heat. Not make it better, that's going to make it worse. Number 18, that structure there is a metal because of delocalized electrons. You're looking for metallic bonding properties straight away. I'm hoping you realize that's the only ones that conduct when they're solid. So that must be your metal. 19. Uh, Midium chloride is formed and you're also going to get hydrogen gas. 20. Uh, this is a tricky one because you've got to combine an oxidation and a reduction to get the overall reaction. And to do that, we need to get the same number of electrons being lost and gained. Uh, so the top one here, you're going to have to multiply by 4 to give 12 electrons. And the bottom one, you multiply by 3 and that matches up to this one here. Sorry about the flappy paper noises, by the way. Don't use headphones for this. Which of the following statements is true for ammonia? Um, it reacts with acids. That's it. That's the only one that's true. Uh, 2 over NPKs. That will be answer D for 22. 23, just to have to know it. It's memory time. It's iron is the catalyst for the manufacture of ammonia. 24 is a tricky one, but it's a nice one to do with radioactive decay. When you have beta decay, you increase the atomic number by 1. And when you have alpha decay, you drop the atomic number by 2 and you drop the mass number by 2. So if you've got two betas, that's going to bump up the atomic number by 2 and then two alpha is going to drop it back down to where it started, which means the only one it can possibly be is that. Uh, 88 matches with that one and uh, that one matches with a drop of four in the mass number as well. That's your answer. One more to go, guys. Um, table shows the color of ions. This is a problem solving one. Um, copper two chloride. So copper two ions are blue. Chloride ions are, according to this table, colorless, which means that's your answer right there. Thanks for listening, bye-bye.